Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today, I am with my buddy Kyle of KCS Advanced Machining Services. Now, Kyle is one of the younger generation of machinists that has that really forward-thinking mindset that wants to create the ability to move into the future with great success, and in doing so, has invested in Matt Sura and this MAM machine with pallets all over the place that allow him to do low batches, but also when big jobs come, allow him to jump into large batch runs as well. It's really a pleasure for me to be here and to speak with you and share your story with the global audience. Yeah, thank you for being here, Tony. So let's talk a little bit about, let's start at the beginning of what helped you decide to invest in this Matt Sura MAM machine. Well, talking about the MAM, um, KCS is, uh, is a long history of being a, a high mix, low volume job shop. Uh, you know, built to spec five axis manufacturer, five axis job shop. And um, uh, we identified some new opportunities in a uh, high volume production. And you know, faced with the, uh, the everyday challenges of, uh, of labor and, and skills gaps and uh, cost of ownerships, uh, you know, we decided that the, uh, the MAM 35 uh, vertical machining center here is uh, you know, the most efficient and most sensible uh, point of entry into a, a high volume uh, market as well as um, uh, is very well suited for our, our everyday niche of uh, high volume, uh, excuse me, high mix, low volume, uh, five axis machining designed to run, you know, 24 seven for 20 years. Uh, the, the efficiencies, uh, you know, can't be beaten. And let's talk a little bit about precision. I know this isn't your first Matt Sura machine, so precision based on the components you make, and let's talk a little bit about what you make as well. It's not just about part accuracy, but it's also about the, the rotation, uh, the point of rotation accuracy. The, uh, we, we have a lot of data here that the Matt Suras are able to hold that point of rotation, you know, less than five microns throughout the day, uh, time and time again, and what that correlates to is you know, part repeatability, that's that first piece and the last piece coming off the machine the same, or uh, with all the capacity of this pallet pool here, um, the ability to pull a job in that hasn't been ran in months, potentially, and, and get the same part off the machine the first time as it was the last time. And, and, and what kind of parts do you run that require this type of high precision? Yeah, our primary markets are uh, human spaceflight hardware, uh, industrial robotics, uh, firearms, as well as automotive prototype and aftermarket, as well as many others. Let's talk for a second about human spaceware. What does that even mean? What are you making? Uh, we're doing spacesuits. Uh, NASA has not built a surface suit since uh, the days of Neil Armstrong. And uh, with the, uh, the pending uh, moon mission, um, they're working on a new surface suit, a new multi-role surface suit, which is modular for uh, the size of astronauts and the the roles of the mission. I, I keep preaching to the guys here that um, you know our goal is to get parts on the moon. Uh, you know we're going to engrave our logo in a boot so that we have our name on the moon, and then uh, you know maybe someday Mars. That's fantastic. I look forward to seeing that on the moon to yeah, start with, too. and then Mars later. So something I want to talk about and kind of reiterate, and we're jumping back to this machine. How many tools does it hold, and what kind of confidence does that give you on a weekend shift when you don't have to be here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, 320 tools in the carousel. Um, right now, we were set up with uh, all you know half of the magazine full for day-to-day uh, -day jobs, plus uh, a fair bit uh, dedicated to redundant tooling. 36 years old, right? Yes, sir. You've been doing this for 11 years. This is your newest purchase, so it's very obvious to me that you're a forward-thinking, creative, but also younger generation getting into machines. What inspired you to go with Matsura? Yeah, we decided to go with the Matsura, you know, basically due to the, uh, the factory-built automation. Uh, this machine model particular, they've been building since 91. Uh, we decided that uh, we, we wanted to go the route of a manufacturer who's perfected the technology, who, who arguably invented the technology or possibly modernized the technology you know, in the early 90s, whereas some of the other manufacturers are, 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 are bolt-on hardware or, or third-party hardware with you know, multiple user interfaces and, and essentially, you know, multi different, different, essentially different machine tools, uh, whereas this machine here is 
is, is one machine tool, which includes the pallet changer, uh, the tool magazine, and the machine itself. You know, it's a purpose-built ecosystem, and you know, with, with the, the pallet pool being integrated into the machine controller, there's only one controller that you have to deal with, with lots, and that provides lots of flexibility you know, throughout the day. Um, we, I like to call it uh, one-button automation. You know, we, we decided to go with Matsura, you know, due to their, their one-button automation. You know, we might be, you know, prototyping a single piece and get hung up on the job, and we're forced with either letting the machine sit uh, while we, you know, solve the problems, or we can move on to uh, a second job in the machine that's, you know, already set up and ready to go, therefore taking advantage of, you know, the daytime hours. I know it's a redundant statement at this point, but I'm going to say it anyway, guys. You've heard me say it as well. The name of the game now really is spindle uptime and the ability to keep that spindle turning. And through your 11 years of experience and growth, a lot of that, there was, there was some difficulty in that setup time, which also led you to invest in that Matsura, right? Because even though you could produce high quality parts, that setup time, you know, really took away from that spindle uptime that we're all trying to reach to produce quality parts, to make more money, to get more parts out the door, shorten the lead times, whatever it might be for the people we're working with, Matt Sura supports that. Yeah, I always say that um, with the less expensive machines, you, you, you never stop paying for the machine. You know, they, 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 they have a, a, a lower price tag, but I feel like the cost of ownership is higher, you know, due to you know, maybe possibly maintenance or you know, more or less, usually longer setups or, or typically having to uh, to cater to the machine throughout the process. Whereas you know, we decided to go uh, with the Matsuras due to, um, you know, we were always busy. We we're always, you know, the spindles were, were, were often turning on all the other equipment, but we decided that uh, the accuracy of the machines and the reliability and robustness of the machines would allow us to reduce our setup times. That is absolutely true. Kyle, I really, really appreciate you conveying this message to our audience. I wish KCS all the success moving forward. I want you guys to continue to grow. I look forward to coming back with MTD and doing an interview in a year and five years and 10 years and being a part of the growth with you. So thank you so much for having us in and thank you for conveying this powerful message. You are an amazing person. Thank you very much, Tony.